Hey everybody. Hey. Boy, I had a great nap. Yeah. <laughs> now that was that was rousing. El Condro, that's why I'm a hypochondriac. Yes. And James Weston is back to us, our greatest musician. Woo. Well, one of the What am I wearing today? What are you wearing, Michael? I'm wearing Gucci shoes. Alright. Gucci for you. I got them from a living man. The man is still alive. All right. Electric blue wool socks. Uh, almost velvet pants, the corduroy, very fine. Uh, velvet jacket, pretty scarf. Uh, handkerchief I stole from some woman's house and hung around my neck. Fucker! Uh, no, 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 no. She was very nice. Was very All nice. right. Good stealing. <laughs> well, you know, I steal from the rich and the poor and the people I like and the people I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, Brian. I've never stolen anything in my life. Except hearts. No. Um, the face is not real. Yeah, it's a Japanese mask. It's a Japanese. Can't you tell? I'm just not feeling it tonight, Tom. I'm just not feeling it. Let's move on to the next. Michael, I wasn't feeling it when I walked in here tonight. Let's get the show over with. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will take questions from the audience. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm just talking to the three people who are listening to me now. Michael will give you knowledge. So if you walked in here and you paid nothing to get in, you're going to leave with more than you came. I encourage you to ask Michael any question that has been troubling your mind. He'll give you the answer. He'll give you the real deal. Now, let us begin with your question. What is your question? Well, now that you mentioned it, I want to know about your face. Hold it to go. You said that it was a Japanese face. Now I want to know about it. Okay. Michael, the question is, tell us about your Japanese face. It's so, okay. In the early 19th century, all right, there were sailors, Western sailors, who were shipwrecked in Japan. At the time, Japan was a closed society. They did not want foreign influence. And um, they were so impressed by the big noses and the, you know, and the, the well, I'm not blonde and I don't have blue eyes. And... Anyway, they, 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 they had a whole series of unique, exaggerated Western features, masks. And uh, today, they, they turn up from time to time, and they demand a lot of money. But occasionally, they wind up in a second-hand store, and people like me get them. So, there we go. <laughs> now, Michael, are you wearing one of these Japanese masks as we speak? <laughs> Indeed, I am. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that answered your question. And now, we'll come across, we'd like to get some new people. Here. Yes, the bearded teddy bear in the back. I stopped drinking eight hours ago. Does this get better? No. All right. All right. You need to drink some more. Otherwise, Nia's going to be grumpy. Okay, here we go. Oh, grumpy Nia. <laughs> yes, the Naked Poet has a question. Yes, Naked Poet, I'll bring the mic over to you and what would you like to say? And please don't, whatever you do, don't hold the microphone in front of the speaker. That's the most important thing that you need to know. Okay. Michael, this is a two-part question. First question, first part is, have you ever worn a tuxedo? Second part is, have you ever been naked on a beach? Great questions. Michael, your thoughts? Okay, the first part, and I want to, you sound a lot like Walter Conkright. Cronkite. Cronkite. Yeah, anyways. How many of you had, Michael? Um, none. First of all, it's not called a tuxedo. Oh, okay. It's called a dinner jacket or a black tie. Ooh, that's Tuxedo is the name Thank of a club in New York. Me. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no, I have not. Uh, 
secondly, what was the second plan? Naked on a beach. Yeah. You have. Well, I grew up on, near a beach. All right. There you I grew up near a beach. Anyway, that, that's not, yes. All right, we're going to do an A and B question from the front row, and I'd just like to add at this point, what a nightmare, right, Nia? Jesus Christ. This is this is like the Hindenburg blew up already. It's like light it on fire again. Watch them burn again. And you know, stomp them into the dirt like little ants. Just grind them in there and light them on fire and... You know those people that pour that silver shit into the ant thing and they're making sculptures? You know that kills all the ants? That's what we're doing. Well, that's ant genocide. What was your question? Question A was... Question A was, I really like your shoes and I wanted to know where you got them from. I'm a loafer type. And B was, um, were you by yourself when you were in the naked? Or did you have Michael. Alright, where, where do you get those loafers and where do you make it on the beach? <laughs> no, no, was he alone? Okay, first of all, uh, thank you very much. Loafers. Thank you, I like loafers too. They're one of my favorite types of shoes. No, yeah. I have so many. I have so, I'm mm. not talking about Oh, no, no, no. It's the only time I wear sneakers. No, I've always, I, I've, I've, we're more loafers people. They're better for your feet. They look much better. They look much better. There's a lot of ugly shoes out there. A phenomenal amount of ugly shoes. And then there's people who don't wear shoes. That's right. Barefooters. Um, They're all over Facebook. You realize there's a, a, a website about your feet. I absolutely have. So I got... So actually, the uh, loafers are Gucci. And they're from the 80s. And I did get them secondhand. I have a friend whose feet got too fat, so he gave me oh. his shoes. I so used, that's how I, I got them. Right, that was great. Oh, Thank she's you, about Michael. to say something. Hold on. I used to. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm not going to say like the 80s is vintage, but yeah. like I actually used to rub, be in a business slash sell in the business where like we would trade and sell like shoes from like different decades. I just love that it's Gucci from the 80s. Oh, that was the golden age of Gucci. Oh, I just, yeah. Golden age of Gucci. Oh, the second part of your... Um, yes. I was very little and with my mother and uncles. You should try it now. With so, I, I... Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very but fun, it, it is. I'm, I haven't done it in a I'm while because, nice, it, you know, it's Florida. It's a police state. You know, you get naked and there's... No, no, no. You know, no I know. No, there's, I know, I know, there's, there are many new beaches in Florida, actually. It's not new, but it's part of it. Okay. Oh, nice. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, okay, yeah. I just want to say, Jonah. your mom's from Germany, your friend came, got arrested for being on the beach. Your mom's from Germany? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and your, I, I never guessed that, you look, you know, you know, you know, you know, just. I'm sorry, when we go out, people think that we're brothers. But you're Russian, right? You're Swedish, close. Well, they're like Germans. Well, I'm, I'm more Germany <laughs> North. Huh? Well, yeah. Gustavus Adolphus, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Christian the Twelfth. Yes. Sweden used to be three times as big. That was my question was going to be about And that. then the Russians took all that away. Yeah, oh, so your question, sorry. No, I was going to say my question was about the, uh, Christian the Twelfth. Oh, really? So why, why did Christian the Twelfth lose? To Russia after they beat Denmark and Okay, he, was, he got very reckless. He was getting very reckless. He was reading lots of books on Alexander the Great. And, you know, he pushed, the third time he pushed into Russia against Peter the Great, he came into the Russian winter. And um, he just didn't have the manpower. Actually, most people in Sweden at that time were Finns. And they didn't have any special love for Stockholm. So, um, in, in the matter of four years, Sweden went from being a world... Most people don't know Sweden was a world power. It went to being, well, one-fourth of the size. Let's end it on a bang. I want to hear something really low-down and non-cerebral and uncouth 
Someone asked me something really vile. Michael, how big is your dick? <laughs> Tom? Tom? Because I'm not the naked poet, I'm not going to show you. No shame in his game. But I have a strap on my ankle, and that keeps it from just... Uh, have you seen the documentaries of whales mating? Bullshit. And now we know the truth of you. Tom. I don't care if you don't believe me. Thank God, we're getting somewhere. Go on. I, I don't really care, Tom. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Tom. Because as cowboys, not cowboys, as uh, 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 tapeworm said, you know, this is, uh, this is misery, misery, hate my life, uh, you know, unhappy, uh, you know, the complete inversion of Brian Biarski. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're nihilistic. This is a, a, a religion about nihilism. And key to nihilism is not caring. May I offer, offer this? There's a great movie, and you all need to see it. It's all called right. Hedwig and the Angry Inch. And it says, I'm doing the best with what I have to work with. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. It's beautiful. All right. it makes me cry when I hear it, because it's true. Mm -hmm. you judge people on you know, your aesthetics about what you've read in the paper, or what your expectations are, or anything else. You've got to take people as they are. You have to take them as they are and accept them. And uh, there's such deeper levels to people than their physicality or even their own idea of themselves. You've got to dive in there like Jacques Cousteau going into the black water of Lake Titicaca. <laughs> you have to go down there in that submarine and say only one thing. I am, going, I am going down there to investigate. And, Whatever, whatever I discover, I'm going to bring back and share with the world. Yeah. And, and Michael, you have a little dick. I tell everybody. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Michael's dick is gi ginormous, and uh, and that's sad because he's a woman. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, Michael, what I'm trying to say, eloquently, in the most eloquent way that I can, is be who you are, enjoy who you are and let everybody be who they are and enjoy who they are. And if for some reason there uh, becomes a conflict, uh, you know, work it out in the bedroom. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say uh, life is good and we're all a part of it. And uh, at, the, at the center of life, we're all one. And let's, let's uh, appreciate what we have in common, respect our differences, and do the best we can to embrace diversity as a strength and a weakness. How's that? Thank you, everybody. Michael Garvin, everybody, give him a round of applause. And now, ladies and gentlemen,